All right, thank you so much. Uh, I apologize for the delay on my end. My name is Fayo Kemi Ojo, and I will be presenting our research um, paper titled VizGNN, um, titled VizGNN Personalized Visualization Recommendation via Graph Neural Networks. Um, and I could not have done this without my collaborators at Johns Hopkins, Ryan, Chunan, um, Unyi, Fan, Jane, and Sung Shul. So um, just a quick overview of what I'll be talking about today. I'll be doing an introduction of personalized visualizations, um, discuss the related work in this field, the approach or methodology, I'll be discussing that, what our experience and results were, um, conclude and take questions. So visualizations consist of both data attributes and visual configurations or design choices. Um, in this top image, you can see examples of some of the design choices involved in many visualizations. You have chart types, which include bar plots, line graphs, scatter plots, et cetera, X, uh, Y variable types, color, size, and et cetera. Yeah, these are just some of the examples of what these design choices are. A user can have any data set of interest to them containing many attributes. And that data set can be visualized in an exponential number of ways. An example um, on a smaller scale is the stock prices, um, how some people prefer to view that as um, a line graph or uh, a bar and whisker plot. Um, overall, knowing the customer's preference before they use the software creates a better user experience. Um, users can be more likely to subscribe or pay for additional services when the visualization is aligned with their visual preferences. Overall, personalized visualization recommendations improve the user experience and can be a worthwhile investment for data-centric companies. So um, to go over some of the related work quickly, um, there are rule-based visualization recommendation systems that are defined by humans at large, um, human behavior at large, and how people best perceive information. Um, this method is why many visualizations um, you know, online just usually have a default. So anything showing something over time is usually displayed as a line graph. Um, because rule-based visualization recommendation systems do not leverage training data, they kind of just look at, they define metrics. Um, there cannot be personalization or learning involved. Machine learning visualizations, however, do use learning, um, but look at um, global visualization models um, and not individuals. And then, um, we are interested in using graph neural networks because they have been useful for um, a variety of uh, powerful tasks and applications that involve large amounts of data um, where the data is heterogeneous. Um, and GNNs can overcome the issue of disjoint data sets, which is you know, a common issue and challenge um, when trying to personalize data from data sets. The prior research provides uh, a great foundation for automatically generating and recommending visualizations to users. However, the closest prior work solves fundamentally different problems. The prior work does not predict the full set of design choices. Um, it only looks at a subset um, like chart type um, in, in most of that research. And there is no user specific uh, personalization. Um, as previously discussed, the rule-based and machine learning-based visualizations were both uh, agnostic of the user and looked, um, looked at general uh, design preferences of a population. Um, in addition, um, the prior studies also really only looked at small data sets, um, but in practice, users have many data sets and these data sets are large. So um, some of that is kind of impractical. This brought us to our primary research question. Given a user and a new data set of interest to that user, can we accurately recommend the top most relevant visualization for that user using a graph neural network? So we started with um, the gra this graph neural network algorithm. So given a large heterogeneous graph G, we have a neural network, uh, we have a neural network layer represented as this nonlinear function 
where um, we have HK plus one, which is the feature representation at layer K plus one equal to the function of HK, the feature representation at layer K um, and lambda G, the function of graph adjacency matrix. And this equation kind of functions as a forward pass or um, forward propagation through the, through the layers. So um, the first thing that we did was aggregate the visual con the, the, the approach of our um, and methodology of this research has three main parts, which is aggregating, predicting, and recommending. The first part is uh, aggregating the visual configuration and data attributes when training the model. So, um, so in this step, we are essentially mapping every data attribute in each data set to a shared meta feature space. Um, this enables us to learn from attributes that are statistically and semantically similar to those in the data set of interest to the user. And this is um, the algorithm that you know, was the basis of, um, of, of this work. Um, and this is the visualization um, explaining how the aggregation um, step works. Next, we predict. We predict the, we, we, uh, we um, generate a visualization score and we predict the probability that each data attribute is relevant to the user. So essentially, we actually broke this down into smaller steps. We first looked at the probability of the visual configuration and the probability of the um, data attributes uh, fitting what the user wanted. And then we used that to come up with the Y hat, which is the, um, the visualization score um, that we gave the visualization for user I. So that is the prediction step. And lastly, our recommend step is where we output um, a user relevant ranking of attributes and visualizations for our user. So that is the bulk of the methodology for this work. Um, the data that we used um, was formulated, we formulated a large graph representing users. Um, and this includes a data set of visualizations that the user has previously viewed or interacted with, data attributes used in the visualization for context, um, and the data sets and visualizations um, were publicly available. And we got these from Plotly. So in this, um, and, and, and the data we used Users, there were we had seventeen thousand users, and they had an average of about five point four data sets, um, and the data sets, and we had ninety four thousand uh, data sets with two million attributes and thirty two thousand visualizations. So the data that we looked from was quite large, um, and we think that this, because this is a large, um, this is this is a large data set with you know, and it was heterogeneous. We think that this is very practical. So we performed experiments to determine the effectiveness of our model. So we, um, so the, we looked at two metrics. We looked at the hit rate at K, and then we looked at the um, normalized discount cumulative gain at K. And essentially um, how this works is that, the, is that um, we chose a random uh, visualization that the, that the user had. And then we added 19 negative visualizations. So there was one positive visualization, 19 negative ones. And essentially we're looking at the likelihood of finding that positive visualization at, it, at each um, hit. So here in this, uh, first, in this first table, um, it's showing that for our model um, at the first hit, um, there's a 68% chance that we're gonna find the positive visualization. And compared to these other state-of-the-art baselines that we use, PopDiz, PanNDiz, and um, EAL, EALS, um, ours um, is much better. And this is for the hit rate at K, and this also applies to the, uh, non, to the um, discount cumulative gain um, at K as well. Here, we um, in this second table, we did an aggregate. So, um, the algorithm that we used in um, our VizGNN was uh, we used a sum aggregator. So we compared the sum aggregator we used to the long short-term memory aggregator and then the mean aggregator instead, but everything else was the same. 
Um, and then for hit rate at K, ours overall perform better, except for at two. But for the discount cumulative gain at K, um, the long short term memory performed better. So um, yeah, this shows the importance of you know testing everything and um, looking at different metrics. And then we did some additional experiments as well. Here we looked at um, how embedding dimension um, had an impact on accuracy in our results. Um, and as the embedding dimension increased, as D increased, the accuracy um, increased as well. And it improved with this GNN program. We did something similar for layer size. And um, as the layer size increased, the results increased as well. We, had, we got better results and we, it improved accuracy. Um, it didn't improve by much, but it did make a difference. And then in this last table, um, instead of looking at um, the personalized visualization recommendation, we looked at the personalized attribute recommendation. And we used the attribute uh, K, K neural network algorithm and we just used random to compare. And so random is just randomly picking from the hat what you get. And in this instance, the this GNN performed better for the more specific task of um, personalized attribute recommendation as well. So in closing, uh, this work introduced the first GNN-based framework for solving the problem of personalized visualization recommendation. The goal for this research is to serve as the foundation for future, future research using uh, more advanced and sophisticated graph neural networks, um, graph neural network models for personalized visualization recommendation problems. Um, I would like to thank um, Adobe um, Research, uh, my collaborators there. Um, I would also like to thank the GEM program for um, working with me during this research. Um, and I will now take any questions. Okay, are there any questions? Um, okay, since we, we actually have like one minute left, uh, left uh, I'll ask a quick question. Like, what's the, uh, can you make an example of like the application for for this paper? Like in the real life, when we're using apps, how are we going to use this feature like, to recommend for, for users? Yeah, so I would say that any company that, you know, is data centric, um, uh, like, so this was kind of designed for, you know, Adobe's platforms. So, you know, users have a lot of data there. They have a lot of things that they interact with there. Um, and the idea would be to um, use their history to automatically generate visualizations because that saves a lot of time for the user um, when things are visualiz visualized in a way that, um, that they automatically already understand because you know, it's just the way that they prefer, they prefer to see things. Um, they kind of just disseminate and understand the information a lot easier. So I think, I think a good example is like data stories. Um, I think uh, Spotify also does good things like that with their end of the year wrap up. So I think that's kind of somewhat an example of um, personalized recommendations. Um, that's very cool uh, work. So uh, any more questions?